Welcome back, everybody. Today is going to be a patch analysis for the new 7.35C update. As we got a lot of heroes, a lot of items changed, no major hero release or battle pass of any sort or arcanas. But honestly, I'm very happy that they're just shaking up the meta beforehand because they've already announced in the near future in Valve time that they will be releasing that. In the meantime, we've got ourselves a bit more balanced of a patch at least from what I've seen thus far. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, looks like a lot of minor tweaks to items, like slight nerf on Hell of Iron Wills, slight buff on Orb of Venom, slight buff on Talisman, buff on Voodoo Mask, buff on BKB. Really important to note that this is 20% less damage that you're taking. Like, before you were taking 50% damage, and now you're taking 40, so it's like you go from taking 40 damage instead of 50, which is 20% less, assuming that a spell hits for 100. So, like, pretty significant buff to that aspect of BKB. They made it so Bloodstone now provides provides mana regen. I think it's still garbage. Bloodthorn with a like slight decrease in cost, but less damage. I still think it's a very good item. So like you see like items that were under purchased, like Dagon getting some quality of life buffs. Diffusal now has a slight mana cost. So heroes like Slark and Pango that may have issues balancing their mana cost plus the diffusal timing are going to struggle with this. But heroes that go like a later diffusal, not so much. Now Disperser, this is a big nerf to Meepo specifically, but also just Disperser as a whole. It makes it, so it's kind of like Omni Knight's old Heavenly Grace, where when he casts on an ally, he also casts it on himself, or an enemy also casts it on himself. So for Meepo's sake, it's no longer AoE, so he can't just haste all of his Meepos and run away. But otherwise, I don't think it's that much of a nerf, other than Meepo. So I will just say that the cost increase of 400, I think is warranted. The item is still going to be pretty good for what it does. It's like a Lotus Orb on a carry. Like you can still dispel your teammates while also dispelling yourself. So it's like removing silences and roots and all that kind of stuff. It just now doesn't give your entire team haste, but I still think it's a good item. Eternal Shroud, slight nerf. Gleipnir, slight buff. Honestly, I think that item is like already pretty decent. Heart of Tarrasque, slight buff after the nerfs back to back to back to back. Heaven's Halberd, been given some decent buffs. I think the fact that BKB just removes it still makes it really hard to, to justify a purchase, but against heroes like Medusa that are going to be coming up in the meta, I believe, that don't want to buy BKB, we might be seeing a lot more Halberds. I still think Helm of the Overlord doesn't really have a place. They gave a bunch of small buffs to all of the Kaya's, Yasha's, and Sanja's, so you guys can kind of just read those here. I feel like those items were basically outshined by all of the oblivion staff items like any like orchid witchblade as well as mage slayer and they just weren't generally picked up on any roll so all of them have been buffed that feels pretty nice conda snipers n now do 50 extra damage <laughs> mage slayer what we've all been hoping to see 200 gold more significant on an item that cheap uh, that's like an extra 30 seconds it takes at that stage in the game to get it. It's an extra creep wave. A magic resistance by 5%. The damage is actually increased, but the debuff duration is down to 3 seconds. So it really did feel like you could just pick any ranged hero and just go click that guy, click that guy, click that guy. And they were all just doing no damage. But now you actually have to be clicking the guy. Like you can't be clicking the guy and then running away for 6 seconds and then clicking him again. So I think Mage Slayer is still going to have games where you're like, oh, this is a sick item like against the Timber Saw and stuff like this but in general i think they gutted the fact that this item is op i don't think we'll be seeing it every game at all we're actually gonna see i think i'll it be replaced by orchid which this got 200 gold more expensive this got 200 gold cheaper so it's like in the past they were 850 gold difference of cost now they're just 450 gold so they're basically oh, like half as much the difference between the two items and I, I compare them because they're both mana regen, they're both attack speed, and they both kind of shut down the opponent in different ways. One makes it so your spells do no damage, and the other one makes it so you can't cast spells. I'll just say that I think we're going to see a ton of Orchids. Like, Orchid's going to be the most popular item in the meta right now, uh, moving forward. Might even be borderline broken in need of a nerf, but we'll see. Because it just got strictly buffed by 200 gold, and it was already getting purchased, I feel like. Meteor Hammer by 250, actually, because of the Kaya buff as well. MKB with a slight buff, not bad. Nullifier. So basically, every item we didn't see at all is getting buffed. Parasma we saw a lot of, so it got nerfed by 400 gold and 5 intelligence. Radiance wasn't getting purchased because of Mage Slayer. 
I think with Mage Slayer getting nerfed, we'll see a lot more Radiances. Specifically, Alchemist is who I'm looking at right now. Team Liquid was already busting out Alchemist offlane, similar to like the old Wraith King style. I'm not trying to encourage you guys to do that necessarily because you'll probably get reported, but I do believe Alchemist is going to be a powerful hero in the meta because he was bad against Diffusal and he's good with Radiance. He was bad against Mage Slayer. So like, I think just in general, because of the Mage Slayer nerfs, the Radiance buffs, like I just said he's bad against Mage Slayer because... Radiance was bad against Mage Slayer. Uh, Revenant's Brooch, less mana cost. So the Mars memes are real. Uh, you also will not use a thousand mana to flat cannon. <laughs> Shivas, massive nerf. So if we're looking at the items as a whole, it's just the Mage Slayers, the Shivas. They've been gutted. We see Vladimir's makes it so for the user or the wearer of the Vladimir's, it's the exact same, but the auras are significantly weaker. So item is still probably want to be picked up. It's still cheap and cost effective, but at the same time, it's not some like crazy five man ball item anymore. It's mainly about the lifesteal, the damage, and a little bit of extra bonuses on top. Wraith Band needed a slight nerf for sure. People like intelligence heroes were buying Wraith Band. So instead of Null Talisman, I'm actually surprised they didn't buff Null Talisman, to be honest. Uh, I thought they would. The neutral items. We had talked about neutral items being very imbalanced right now. So we see nerf, 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 major nerf. I still think safety bubble is a pretty good neutral item. <laughs> and they nerfed the shit out of it. So I now think Seeds of Serenity is going to be strictly better as a health regen sustain item. But like if you need sustain, Safety Bubble will still be good because if you think about taking the 100 damage and then regening on 8 seconds, it's theoretically 12 and a half health regen. Um, it obviously doesn't work that way because you're not always taking damage and you're not like instantly the second that it refreshes. But, you know, we could argue it's probably like 5 to 10 health regen if you are taking damage periodically from jungle camps and such. Trusty Shovel, nice. Extra 15 HP. Bullwhip no longer interrupts movement so quality of life buff there and honestly it also buffs it um in terms of use for like spear breaker charge and stuff but they also nerfed it slightly slight nerf slight buff slight nerf slight buff slight buff so neutral creeps be wary when you go to that small camp guys because that small camp is packing a punch okay and if you guys were also looking to practice your cobalt challenge where you see us with the cobalt creep it has now been buffed significantly ogre bruiser uh, now will not cast Ogre Smash while above 70% HP. This one is big because you can actually stack that fucking camp. Hero changes. Slight nerf. Don't know why. Arc Warden. Pretty big nerfs. Base strength and strength gain on a hero that the only play is to go on him. So I feel like Arc Wardens were just buying like Speared Vessels and Gleipnirs and you would close the gap on him and then he would just live. So honestly, pretty big nerfs. Don't underestimate the value of losing 80 HP at level 10. Like, that's what he's lost. Don't devalue that. It's very important. But most notably, Spark Wraiths went from 45 seconds to 16. So, a good old fuck you to Arc Warden. I'm sure Reddit users are rejoicing. I think the hero will probably still see play, but he's definitely significantly weaker. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if his win rate goes down like 5%, to be honest. It was like 56%, so. Batrider, slight nerf, slight buff, nerf to divine favor mana cost. I don't know how important that is because I don't play this hero, but he was very strong. Death Prophet, slight nerf. I think heroes like Death Prophet were only kept in check by Mage Slayer because, like, she'd be running around with Exorcism on and you could just make her do no damage. So, honestly, I didn't think Death Prophet was all that great of a hero, but the fact that they nerfed Mage Slayer might even just make her better. Like, even with the nerf. Doom, nerf. Most notably, when we look at heroes like Death Prophet and Doom and stuff, and later we'll see Timbersaw, we have to remember that Shiva's got nerfed by 400 gold. And the stats on it got nerfed. So, what's important about this is these heroes liked rushing Shiva's. Like, literally rushing it. So, now it's coming, like, a minute later, assuming they're having a good game. So, heroes like Doom are significantly weaker because of that. But I think Doom's still gonna be good. To be honest, I just think he, like, in my games, he was getting first pick, first banned every single game. Like, he would just get dual picked and banned. But I don't think, I think he'll be like a second round pick. That's where I, I'm putting Doom now. I think he's still strong. I think the Doom duration early kind of hurts, but by no means is any of this crippling. But his laning stage is a bit more fragile, all that kind of stuff. Dragonite, they nerfed his, like, later stages of his dragon form. It is what it is. I think the hero was honestly broken because of Mage Slayer, but I think the build will still be the same. I think Dragonite still wants that same build. So Mage Slayer, Manta, Blink, 
Octarine Ags. And the hero will probably still see play, but once again, not very, like, he's not going to be broken anymore, I really don't think. Ember, okay, also nerfed by Mage Slayer. For Ember specifically, it was insanely broken because Slide of Fist is a six second cooldown. So you went from applying Mage Slayer 100% of the time because it used to be six seconds to now three. But I think for Ember, the Mage Slayer nerf was probably more impactful than like any other hero because it just fit his toolkit literally perfectly. Uh, Malefist nerf, Faceless Void, getting some pretty like if you look at like the last six patches for faceless void it's just been nerf 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 so they're finally making it so that time dilation is potentially not a 1.1 wonder people were just going 414 stats and then they're also kind of gutting his 15 talent i think it used to be 50 then it went to 40 and now 30 i'd almost argue that you don't even want these talents anymore like you could just take stats over 30 time lock damage like that's like nine damage if you take like multiple bash procs and all that kind of stuff it's like nine damage <laughs> For a 15 talent, it's like literally nine damage. Yeah, base armor by one as well on a hero that sustains in lane. These kind of things add up, 100% add up. There's going to be matchups that he previously would win, and now he'll go even or lose because of this and this. Like 30% progress means that if it's a hero with like a four second cooldown, you can't time dilate them anymore and have it be meaningful. So his matchups in lane are still good if the abilities are like 15, 20 second cooldowns. But for like really low cooldowns, this sucks now because the ability will come off cooldown anyways in lane. Got to be kind of mindful of like what abilities become available again with 30% time dilation. Hoodwink. Okay, not really a nerf. She was buying Mage Slayers and stuff, but I don't think she needed it. So I think Hoodwing's still going to be really strong. So Leshrac was definitely gimped by Mage Slayer. Like the fact that the item was in the game hurt Leshrac a lot. So he's already naturally buffed. But the fact that Bloodstone still probably kind of sucks. Maybe the buildup for Bloodstone is just better enough to make Leshrac viable because he also got an early game mana buff. And they also buffed Kaya to 10% spell amp. So maybe worth trying Lesh. The level one Pulse Nova plus... Like, rushing Kaya might be really nice. He's still an amazing Shiva's buyer, like, late game, like, mid-late game. And at that stage in the game, the 400 nerf doesn't really hurt him that much because it's not like, like, at that stage of the game, you get 400 gold in, like, 20 seconds. Lion. I think I will be trying Leshrac now that I think about it. Mage Slayer nerfs, all the other heroes getting nerfed. I don't even know if I'd buy Bloodstone, though. Lion with the nerf. A nerf on Mana Drain, thank goodness. You can read this yourself. Sucks to suck, Lion. <laughs> Lone Druid. Throw him in the fucking trash can as nobody wants to see you anymore, Lone Druid. We all hate you, so at least I do. And if you're in this channel and you're watching my video, I hope you sh share the same sentiment as he has been significantly nerfed in the early game. Significantly. Magnus. Fixed interactions. Okay. Seems like nothing major for Mag. Probably still a decent hero. We talked about Meepo. The biggest nerf for him was Disperser no longer being an AoE. So it just purges all of his Meepos and runs them away. So honestly, that's like the biggest part about Meepo that I think got nerfed. But they also nerfed his Dig and they nerfed his Mega Meepo. So honestly, his win rate probably goes down 2-3% just by, by those plus Disperser changes. Nature's Profit, base damage decreased by 3 in the words in the ways of Hover Simpson in the Simpsons movie. A sprout damage per second rescaled. Okay. Longer cooldown on his teleport early levels. Nice. Now correctly nullifies pure damage. Okay. Aghanim Scepter. Okay. Slight buffs to PA. Probably still trash. Slight nerf to Slark. Probably still good. His build is obviously going to be different. Like, it's going to be about the same. I was already going Orchid in some games on Slark. And so I might just shift Mage Slayer to Orchid. Obviously, defensively, it's not that great, but it still gives you attack speed, mana regen, which he really likes. So in the buildup of Oblivion Staff is fantastic. I'm gonna have to figure this one out, but Slark was absolutely broken if we weren't like on the same page there. And now it's a matter of, I think he's still in theory very strong. Can we still make him work due to the fact that they nerfed his early game items? Can we still make him work? That's the question. Terrorblade, nice. Base strength, uh, reflection cooldown, okay. TB might see some play as well. You gotta remember, like, these little nerfs plus these little buffs. Like, TB's also bad against Slark, for instance, right? He's bad against Faceless Void because Faceless Void's one of the few heroes that can full to zero him. So, you not only have to be thinking about what the hero got as a buff, but also, like, were there prevalent meta heroes that were, like, shutting this guy down? I also hated playing Terrorblade into Doom. So, and, like, Shiva's Rushers. Like... Terrorblade might go up significantly in terms of viability simply because Shiva's is less prevalent. Slark and Faces Void are less prevalent. I'm actually selling myself on fucking trying Terrorblade, but uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of that at the end of this video where we're just going to be talking about like, I'm going to change my hero grid a little bit, kind of set myself up for success, things that you guys can be doing as well in your own way. Timbersaw, 
Okay. I mean, major factor is the Shiva's nerfs for Timber. Vengeful Spirit got some nerfs. Honestly, surprised it's not more. Vengeful Spirit was like first pick, first ban every competitive match, but with a really high win rate in pubs. But uh, at least she got some nerfs. And I guess Vlad's got nerfed. She buys that a lot, but I don't know. I feel like they could have nerfed Venge more. Viper, this hurts. The level one max DPS of Nether Toxin from 50 to 35. I think Viper was already borderline meh. Like I said, I made that video on him that I thought he was really meta, but then people started picking up on the fact that Viper was good. And then they started counterpicking Viper. And then Viper picked, like felt a lot worse as a hero because people were counterpicking it. And uh, I, I just feel like at my bracket, at least, this hero was kind of solved. So I think he's now reached like the cheese 10th pick territory where like they have Huskar or something and you just need to break him, you know? And then Aghanim Scepter no longer grants True Strike. Dude, I just love Witch Doctor getting these nerfs on his ult and his and his uh, shard because I see these Reddit posts complaining about him and I haven't seen a Witch Doctor in my games in like a year. <laughs> But yeah, pretty funny. Okay, so we've read over all the patch notes, you know, quick summary. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to do some theory crafting on our hero grid. So what's so important for me about the hero grid is that it kind of helps me keep tabs of what I thought of last patch. And so we're going to adjust it a little bit or a lot to this new patch. So first and foremost, heroes that were in our ban list, right? Like, so these are the heroes that we are worried about banning. I would say Viper's like definitely gone down. I had Naga in there because of heroes like Viper getting counterpicked by Naga. I think Naga is going to be moved down as well. I think Lone Druid's completely taken off. Like, I don't think he's very good. I would put Nature's Prophet lower as well. Meepo is definitely lower. I think Doom is probably still there. I think there's not another, there's no hero where I'm like, that's so fucking broken. We have to be worried about it. I will say my gut theory is that Alchemist and Slark are going to be like two of the best carries. So I'm going to put them in here. I like to group heroes that counter each other near each other. So like I'll put OD next to Slark. I don't know how much I worry about Wyvern anymore. I haven't really seen the hero as much recently. And the Mage Slayer nerf, I think, is pretty significant for Wyvern. Honestly, Medusa, I'm going to keep her on my radar. And I'm going to keep her next to Anti-Mage. I really think Medusa is going to be up there because she was already getting picked a lot. I'm going to put all the carries next to each other. Because Anti-Mage was already seeing play as like a counter pick. And now, obviously, with Medusa, I think being potentially a very strong hero. I'm really just looking at, for the record... I feel like people over fixate on heroes getting buffed or nerfed. Like, I think this type of patch is going to be, we have to think of the implications that Mage Slayer is no longer getting rushed. Shiva's is no longer getting rushed, or at least it's not as fast. There's probably going to be more Orchids, which makes Manta Builders much better. So like heroes like Medusa and Luna that just go first item Manta are going to be better in a meta like this. While heroes like Slark that like to maybe delay their Disperser or their other Dispel items might go down in value for all we know. So. So these are just things we're thinking about. Troll didn't get touched. Faces Void, I think we're going to bump him down a little bit. Troll, I think, is going to be like the new top dog. I think it's like Troll. I know I keep saying a bunch of carries, like this mom is my favorite role. I'm looking at Troll. I was actually having decent success with Weaver already. So the fact that Gleipnir got buffed is a pretty huge buff for Weaver as well. Pudge, I'm going to leave next to Naga and Peel because that's why he's there, specifically when the opponent has an illusion carry. Um, that's not TB. With Radiance getting buffed, do we ever consider Lifestealer? Lifestealer is really bad against all three of these guys. So I'm going to say that Lifestealer might be good, but he's bad against Orchid. I'm definitely thinking Luna. Definitely thinking Troll. Bumping down Faces Void a little bit. We need to do CS Trainer with Medusa. Oh, we wanted Alchemist to be higher. So for offlane, I think Viper is going to go down in charts for sure. Tide has actually been really prevalent in the meta right now, but the only thing is both Vlad's and Mage Slayer got nerfed, actually. Wraith King is no longer in here. Didn't really like Nyx. Like heroes like Axe are just owned by Mage Slayer still. Like you just blink call and your spend does no damage. I actually like Mars a lot. In terms of mid, we're going to bump Viper way down. I'm going to add Lesh to my radar. I still really like Zeus. I actually think now that I think about it, the Manta, the Shard, the Kaya buffs. Yeah, Zeus is going to be cooking. Not a huge fan of Nyx. I'll leave him in the bottom though. I mean, honestly, mid's not my main role, so... It's not the best for you guys if you're like an actual mid player because like maybe like the co-ops and shit are good. I also do play co-ops, so I think Orchid Rushers will be good. Towards the end of last patch, I was actually seeing a lot of core Batrider. 
like mid and off lane, and I'm wondering if I should add it. I'm gonna put Batrider in here just so I don't forget, but I was seeing a lot of that hero towards the end. I don't know how I feel about like the summons heroes. I mean, especially like Lycan and Beastmaster with the Helm of the Overlord buffs. I think they're still not very good. Vlad's is like obviously a much worse summons item now because the auras got nerfed. So the main carries I think I'm looking at are these and then Medusa. I'm just thinking about Sven because we are seeing some Sven at the Bet Boom Dacha tournament. He didn't get nerfed and we just have to remember that every time these main heroes get nerfed that these other heroes are getting buffed. I also think Sven was like unplayable against like Wyvern Doom and those heroes were like super prevalent before and I think they're lesser now. When I look at the carries, I really like Venno. L3 gen nerf like uh, against Alchemist and stuff, kiting against Troll. I will say this, that I think the new patch changed a lot about the game in terms of who's going to be picked and played. And so my approach to new patches has really been refined to having a theory of what heroes I think are good and why and sticking to a small pool of heroes for the beginning of the patch just to get a really good, accurate idea of where they stand. I think it requires that you pick a couple heroes from the previous patch that you think are still good because they're kind of like a litmus test for you. And then there's heroes that you think are going to rise in popularity that you're now learning that you're going to add there. So like for carry, I'm going to stick with like Troll Slark, but then I'm going to be looking to incorporate like Medusa Alchemist kind of thing. And then in the off lane, like I still will pick some Doom, but I'm going to look to incorporate like the Mars Venno Alchemist um, in my pool. Um, and then for like mid, I still have DK in my repertoire, but I'm looking at like the Zeus's and the Quops and maybe Leshrax. And then I think for supports, I think for now, I'm going to stick with what I got in my pools because those are not my main played roles. So I'm just kind of sticking to like heroes I'm comfortable on and that I think are still viable. So that's going to be my new approach for 7.35C. Curious to see what you guys think of the heroes I've chosen and what you guys choose. Looking forward to seeing in the comments and I'll see you guys for the next video as I continue to update you guys in this meta.